Oh. Nick Furman, what are your thoughts at this point um, about uh, what we can anticipate uh, hearing from NASA in the next hours, next few days? Well, well certainly uh, you're going to hear what they believe the flight track was and so on. There's some practical issues, I think, that have to be addressed. And one is certainly uh, what's going to happen to the astronauts who are on the International Space Station. You know, there is a crew up there. Um, there's probably not a good way to pick them all up at once using a shuttle, at least not for the next year or so. All right, but we, we should point out, Nick, they have a Soyuz capsule sitting there. It's right, which their raises... escape pod. If they needed to leave, they could, right? Yes, and I, I think it, it's a whole issue of whether you want to abandon the space station. If you have the, the, the you know, are we going to make that kind of a turn at this point? It's really way too early to, to say, but I think that's that something that needs to be addressed uh, by NASA up front. Uh, as to how we're going to deal with this over the next couple of years. Yeah, and and the space station does change the dynamics significantly. We didn't have, obviously, an, an occupied space station in the days uh, of Challenger, and that um, may impact a lot of decision making. Uh, as we look at, let's look at a picture of debris here that we want to just show you. It, Nick, I'm, your thoughts on that? How that might impact? Um, just a still image that we've gotten of just one of what are probably hundreds of pieces. It's, of the space it's hard to, to say exactly what that is. It, obviously, most people are going to be very interested to get to the crew compartment in the mid-deck uh, and try and locate it. Yeah. Um, the biggest problem... Could it survive intact, Nick? It, it could, depending on exactly how, how it was breached. Uh, yeah. wh whether the breach occurred back in the airframe or around uh, you know, the wings of the shuttle, or whether it occurred um, uh, further forward where some of the comm was lost initially. And so, it, you know, it's way too early to know. Hopefully we'll get some, uh, we'll be lucky and have some pictures of, of this uh, as it occurred from some s national security assets or some other assets that may, be, uh, may have been watching it at the time. Let's look at that picture one more time. One thing we didn't note uh, for our viewers, you notice the red, white, and blue ribbon, the red roses or carnations, I guess, in that case, uh, marking the place. Uh, Mike what? Brooks, uh, there's a phone number we're putting on there. And uh, we've been telling them call folks to call 911. Uh, NASA is putting on a number as well. I guess either will work, right? I'd say either will work, yes. But uh, since it is spread over such a large area, I think it's important that, uh, that our viewers know this particular number. And it's, it's on our screen right now. It's area code 281-483-3388. This will take you right into the Johnson Space Flight Center. Now, they only want you to call that number if you have seen or you have found any debris that you feel is part of the shuttle, uh, as part of the Columbia. Please call that number. Again, that number is area code 281-483-3388. Miles? Let me, um, uh, Mike, um, we are, by the way, momentarily, we should be seeing uh, this news conference to begin. Old Heflin, screen right. NASA's Johnson Space Center. Let's listen to a more technical briefing. And then we'll throw it open for questions. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ron. I'm sure you understand how, diffi how difficult time this is for us right now. We're devastated because of the events that unfolded this morning. There's a certain amount of shock in our system because we have suffered the loss of seven family members. And we're learning to deal with that. There's certainly a somber mood in our teams as we continue to try to understand the events that occurred but our thoughts and our prayers go out to the families of Rick and Willie, and David and Kalpana, Michael, Laurel, and Alan. True heroes. And we are suffering for the events that have happened this morning. As difficult as this is for us to do, we wanted to meet with you and be as fair and open with you given the facts as we understand them today. Uh, we will certainly be learning more as we go through the coming hours, days, and weeks. 
tell you as much as we know. We'll be as honest as we can with you. And certainly we'll try to fill in the blanks over the coming days and weeks. As difficult uh, a situation as this is, we are moving forward. We have established a number of different teams. We have contingency plans for the, just these types of events, though we never expect to use them. We, had, we have implemented these contingency plans. We are preserving data. We are beginning thorough and complete investigations. We are mobilizing our forces, our engineers, our technicians, our safety and quality, our best experts to try and understand what went wrong. I do want to take the time right now and express my appreciation for the tremendous number of agencies that are coming to our aid from across the country, both federal, state, and local, that are assisting us in our recovery operations. I also want to express my appreciation to the public for assisting in the recovery, for notifying us of different debris, where, where it is located, that we might get to it as quickly as possible. It's also appropriate that we tell the public to be careful with the debris. What we fly in space is uh, operated in many cases with toxic propellants, and some of the debris may be contaminated. So we need to be careful, and we don't wish any harm to come upon anybody that would be honestly seeking to help. At this hour, we have not positively identified any items that we have recovered. Uh, we are staging in an attempt to ensure that all recovered items are managed appropriately, but at this stage, I haven't received any real information on debris uh, or status of crew remains. I can go back to the uh, start of the day filled with excitement and anticipation. Today was a great day to land in the Florida area. We had uh, all positive indications that it was going to be like every other day where we have landed in Florida. Good weather, anxious team to welcome a fantastic crew back, families that were excited about welcome, welcoming their loved ones back, and no indications at all of any impending threats to the vehicle. The first indications of a potential problem occurred minutes before 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. The first indications were of the loss of sensors, temperature sensors in the hydraulic systems on the left wing, both the left inboard and left outboard Elevon temperature sensors. They were followed seconds and minutes later by several other problems including loss of tire pressure indications on the left main gear, and then indications of excessive structural heating. And uh, Mr. Heflin will talk in a minute about uh, some further details. I have to caution you that we cannot yet say what caused the loss of Columbia. It's still very early in our investigation and it's going to take us some time to work through the evidence, the analysis, and clearly understand what the cause was. But what we are doing is we are impounding hardware so that we can preserve evidence. We have stopped processing at the Kennedy Space Center. We are preserving hardware around the country in our different facilities. We are impounding data here that represented the last data that we received from the crew. And we'll, we will 
be pouring over that data 24 hours a day for the foreseeable future. Again, I express our sadness to the families for their loss. And we'll do our best to answer your questions.